fist jamming, probably the most painful sort of crack climbing there is. Everyone really fears it. It's the most despised size. It's really hard because obviously the pain factor really com comes into its own um, and the expansion that you actually get in your fist when you're in the crack is really small so it feels a lot more insecure um, and people tend to kind of try and move around those jams so they don't have to use those fist jams but let's not avoid that and get on with some of the main types of techniques that we're going to use. There's two main types of technique we're going to use to start with and that's with our palms facing upwards and our palms facing downwards. First one most people use when they put a fist jam in a crack is to place the hand in a loose position in the crack, perhaps finding a small amount of constriction, and then wrapping our fingers down to form a fist position with the thumb importantly coming around to the front of the fist and then creating a secure fist jam. Quite painful, um, I'm not even really putting too much pressure through it already, but again, it's a good secure jam. You just have to grit through the pain a little bit with that. The second hand position that we're gonna have with the fist jam is the palm down position, which again, placing our hand in an open position in the crack we roll our fingers down to form that fist jam position again the same way as before, creating constriction in the crack and there's another solid fist jam in there for you. So one of the problem areas that arise in fist jamming is when your fist is too small to fit in the crack and it's wobbling around, you can't get any secure purchase and you're wishing that you had fists that are about a centimetre wider. We have one last trick that kind of fits into our arsenal with this, and this is our thumb. Previously, we used to bring our fist, uh, fist into a fist position and bring our thumb round to the front. Now what we're going to do is using this thumb as a spacer and bring it around to the side of our fist to create a teacup fist jam. This gives us probably an extra centimetre worth of width in the crack. Really painful, obviously, um, and that's when you might want to consider taping up this section of our thumb so we don't lose quite so much skin on the crack. Um, to illustrate in a crack, We'll place our hand in the open position again. We'll place our thumb early into that side position. And as we drag it into the crack and bring our fingers down, we create that spacer and that thumb sits on the side there. So it's a little bit of a wider fist jamming position. So one of the things that we looked at earlier on was this combination of how we place our fists in the crack one being with our palms facing downwards and the other with our palms facing upwards. Um, and it's this combination is when you're climbing the fist cracks, it becomes quite important um, because if you're clever with the way in which you do it, it means that you have to do less crossed hand positions. So rather than crossing over with your hands each time and you can literally swim up the crack with the top hand leading facing palms down and bottom hand seconding with the palms facing upwards. And I'll just give you a short demonstration of that on this section here. So we're just hanging off that top fist each time to then move up the bottom fist, walking our feet up, moving our top fist up again, placing it, bringing bottom fist up, walking our feet up, again, placing top fist, coming up again, and so on as you go on the crack. So as you get a little bit more confident with fist jamming, you can, instead of doing the swimming technique, which Tom did, which was moving one hand up, then the next hand underneath it like that, um, you can just, if the crack's vertical, just overlap your hands. And then just keep going up like that. You can make bigger movements, I think, and it's a bit, it's a bit quicker. One of, one of the beauties about fist width cracks is that the foot placements are actually very straightforward um, and there's not really too much to them. If you look at your, the size of your fist and then the width of your foot, you'll notice that most feet, people's hands are a very similar width to their foot, which means that when you're placing your feet in the crack, um, it's actually a lot more simple than you think. You literally place your foot straight in, almost as if you were kicking a crampon into snow, um, and your foot will place almost perfectly within the crack. There is some element of twisting it that you can do within that movement, um, but generally it's very, very small, and the, just a mere purchase of the rubber on either side of the crack will be perfectly adequate to stand up.
Join us for the next episode of Wild Country Crack School when the cracks are getting even wider. <laughs>